Good afternoon, Chicago. and thank you all for being here. My name is John Chestakovsky, and I'm Vice President of Communications and Education at the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum in Cooperstown, New York. Welcome to the Hall of Fame's Today's Game Era Committee introductory press conference. Joining me on the dais are Jeff Idelson, President of the National Baseball Hall of Fame, the two newest members of the National Baseball Hall of Fame, Lee Smith, Harold Baines, as well as Chairman of the Board of the National Baseball Hall of Fame, Jane Forbes Clark. Now following the press conference, today's game committee members are here, and I'd also like to invite Jane now to give a few opening remarks. Thank you, John. Good afternoon, and thank you all for being here today. As you know, the National Baseball Hall of Fame's 16-member Today's Game Era Committee met here yesterday to consider the 10 candidates for Hall of Fame election, whose greatest contributions to the game have been realized since 1988. The ballot, comprised of six former players, three managers and one executive was selected by an 11 member historical overview committee of the national, excuse me, the Baseball Writers Association of America. The 16 members of the Today's Game Era Committee were Roberto Alomar, Al Avila, Paul Beeston, Bert Blylevin, Pat Gillick, Steve Hurt, Tim Kirchin, Tony La Russa, Andy McPhail, Greg Maddox, Hall of Fame Vice Chairman Joe Morgan, Jerry Reinsdorf, John Scherholtz, Claire Smith, Ozzie Smith, and Joe Torrey. And on behalf of the Board of Directors of the National Baseball Hall of Fame, I would like to thank them very much for their very thoughtful and productive work yesterday. You heard the results of yesterday's committee work. You heard them last night on MLB Network. They elected Harold Baines and Lee Smith to one of sports' most elite fraternities. Harold Baines played in 2,830 games over a 22-year career, including 14 seasons as a member of the Chicago White Sox, seven with the Baltimore Orioles, as well as time with the Oakland Athletics, Texas Rangers, and the Cleveland Indians. He batted 300 or better eight times, totaling 2,866 hits, and had 11 seasons with at least 20 home runs. He retired after the 2001 season as the all-time leader among designated hitters, in games, runs, hits, home runs, and runs driven in. A six-time All-Star, Silver Slugger, and a two-time Designated Hitter of the Year award winner, please welcome to the National Baseball Hall of Fame's Class of 2019, Harold Baines. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lee Smith began his career with eight seasons as a member of the Chicago Cubs. His 18-year Major League career saw him impact seven other franchises, the Boston Red Sox, St. Louis Cardinals, New York Yankees, Baltimore Orioles, California Angels, Cincinnati Reds, and the Montreal Expos. A top closer of the 1980s and the 1990s, he saved 478 games, which stood as the all-time MLB record for 13 seasons through 2006 and remains the third most in baseball history. A seven-time All-Star, he converted 25 or more saves in a previously unprecedented 13 consecutive seasons from 1983 to 1995 and recorded nearly a strikeout per inning throughout his big league career. 
He now joins the Baseball Hall of Fame class of 2019. Congratulations, Lee. Thank you. They are now both teammates with the all-time greats of the game, and we are so happy to welcome them to Cooperstown. And if I could ask you both to please stand and put on your new team jersey. Slide to the right. Slide to your right. Do a photo. Slide to your right. We'll move these chairs and we'll do a couple of photos over here. Okay, let me just grab this chair. Excuse me. Hey, they ain't got the big. Do you want to get in the middle? No. Do you want to hold We'll do one with just Harold and Lee. You need a hand? Yeah, I'm crooked, man. You didn't tip off. You got a hippie down there, boss, huh? Yeah, yeah. And, and you just want to finish. finish. You ain't gonna let the little brother get. Cut the fun off, man. <laughs> We're very much looking forward to our induction ceremony in Cooperstown on Sunday, July 21st, where Harold and Lee will be joined by any electees who emerge from the BBWAA voting this January. Uh, thank you very much, and I'll now turn the program back over to John. Thank you, Jane. Now, before we open for questions, each of our electees will share some opening remarks, and we'll start first with Harold. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Lee Smith told me to keep this real short, so um, I'm very honored, I'm very humble, and I'd like to thank the uh, Veteran Committee for um, thinking I was worthy of being a Hall of Famer. Thank you. Thanks, Harold. And Lee? Uh, for myself, most of the people in the room know I've uh, never been short for words, but I got to say, I played for a lot of teams. This has got to be by far my best ball club. I love this one here. Thank you guys very much in the committee, and everyone has something to do with this. I love it. Thank you. Thanks, Lee. And uh, now we're ready to take questions. So if you'd like to ask a question, pre please raise your hand and then wait for the microphone. We ask that you also please make clear to whom your question is being directed. And we're ready for questions. Yes, right here. We'll just wait for the microphone one moment. Uh, first of all, congratulations to both of you guys for getting in. Lee Smith, Mike Claiborne from Camo X Radio in St. Louis. When you hung up the phone last night, what went through your mind considering all the years that you waited by the phone for this day? Hey, man, it was, it was tough. I, um, I uh, just couldn't, it's still, I've actually been talking to so many guys now, like Bert and the rest of the fellas, that still hadn't sunk into them yet, so it hadn't got there yet for me either, man. But I tell you what, just to get that phone call, you know, uh, waiting and, and uh, things of that nature, it's a great feeling, man. I, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm short with words right now, but I love 
just to being able to be up here because all the guys that I've seen and played with and seen uh, come up here on this podium, it is unbelievable. I'm lost for words. Hey guys, again, congratulations. Barry Bloom from Forbes. Uh, Lee, you in particular, I, I've covered pretty much your whole career from the ups and the downs. And uh, why do you think it, it took so long considering you're the third leading safe guy with the, with the most saves? Well, uh, I think Miss uh, Miss Jane Clark, uh, she uh, answered that question. I played for a lot of ball clubs. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the one thing is that uh, I've heard a lot about my having um, played for a lot, a lot of different teams and have some water to hang my hat. But like I said, this is my favorite hat so far. I, um, I'm just glad, you know, finally some uh, the closers in the game is getting a little more recognition for what they've done in the game. And uh, I got a call from a good friend of mine, Goose Gossage, earlier, man, and he was like, he had me almost in tears, man, talking about, you know, how long he's been waiting, you know, and, and hoping that I get in. But I tell you what, man, I'm... I, like I said earlier, it just it hadn't sunk in yet for me. Thanks, Barry. Who's who's next? Okay, we can go. <laughs> <laughs> Barry's got another one. <laughs> I'm sorry, Harold. This is also for Lee. You got... I have no problem with that, sir. <laughs> in that case, <laughs> Uh, the fact is that in a year period, to your point, Hoppy gets in, you get in, and it's pretty much a slam dunk that Mo's going to get in. That's quite an accolade for all you guys and what you did in different eras in your job. Well, you know, um, you know, you were talking about Mo. I mean, it's, it goes without without saying, man. This guy, what he's done into the game. But for for me, you know, just thinking about pitching, you know, two innings and more of tight games and uh, games that we were actually losing a couple few times, you know. But you know, I, I think it's really given a lot of recognition to to the uh, relief pitching core of a uh, Major League Baseball now. But you you look at now, they're actually giving the setup man. You know, a little credit now with the hole and things like that. But I actually, you know, thinking so many ball clubs now set their team around their bullpen. You know, because uh, I think what the toughest thing is, if you if a team go out and they lose a game in the fourth inning, they're like, okay, we lost the game in the fourth inning. But it hits the club, I think, a little tougher to lose that game in the eighth or the ninth inning. So it's glad that uh, I'm so glad that we've actually got a little more recognition of what's happening in the game where the game is more important to the end of the game, not just like the start or the middle, but that is great, greatly uh, uh, deserved for, I think, for a closer quarter of the Major League Baseball. Tyler on the right. Uh, yes, congratulations to you both. Uh, Tyler Kepner with the New York Times. Harold in particular, what were, what were your expectations for this ballot? Did you think you were gonna have a, a good chance at this? Um, Tell me what your thoughts were. Um, I, I wasn't sitting around thinking about it, to be honest. <laughs> but I'm very honored to be here. I mean, it's a very special day for um, a lot of my friends are here, and I'm, I'm just honored to be um, part of this great fraternity that I'm, I'm joining. But to be honest, I wasn't sitting around waiting for it to get a call. Because um, I didn't play the game for the Hall of Fame. I played a game to have a job and try to win championships. Uh, Sam Dykstra with Minor League Baseball. Uh, this is for both of you. Uh, the way you guys finish your careers were in very different roles from where you started your career, whether as a starter or as an outfielder, transitioning to a reliever and a DH. Uh, kind of reflect on the transition that you made throughout your career from a day one minor leaguer to what ended up being a Hall of Famer. You want me to do the short one, then you yeah, do the long? Okay. <laughs> um, I started out as an outfielder. Um, I got hurt um, pretty early in my career, and I was fortunate that uh, the American League still had a DH, and I still could hit a little bit. And I had a, a manager that believed in me, Tony La Russa, that gave me a chance. That's it? That's all you needed? <laughs> well, I know you're going to be 20 minutes. So. <laughs> all right. uh, uh, for myself, um, back in the day when, when I was all of my idol 
you know, playing Major League Baseball with, with starting pitchers and the Bob Gibsons and the Fergie Jenkins and, and, and uh, the Nolan Ryans where you wanted to be a starting pitcher because in, in that era, it was somewhat a slap in the face, you know, being a relief pitcher because usually the starter went to a complete game or if he didn't, he got knocked around and, and it was like a mop-up role. And luckily, uh, Mr. Billy William came to my, my home and talked me and to I actually quit playing baseball. And Billy William came to my home and talked me in uh, coming back playing. And uh, like I said earlier, we, we on the air, I can't exactly say what he said to me, but, and so in turn, he said, hey, you haven't done anything in this game yet. Go out there and earn your place. And I uh, said, the rest is history, and I love it. See what I mean? <laughs> Over here on the right. <laughs> Harold, uh, congratulations, Mary Herbert, congratulations. Um, Knowing that Jerry Reinsdorf and Tony LaRusso were... Who's that? I don't know. <laughs> two guys that you've come across paths over the years. Um, that they were on the committee and able to share in this with you. What, what does that mean for this announcement? I think you have to ask them. I mean, they, they know what I feel about them. They're very special to me. Um, they probably helped me, to be honest. But um, our friendship goes further than, you know, the game of baseball. Hi guys, Thanks. Bruce Levine from The Score in Chicago. Congratulations to both of you great gentlemen who I was privileged to watch your entire careers and it was a great joy and a, and a pleasure. Uh, Smitty, uh, a lot of people said that if you uh, ever threw inside that no one would have they hit off of you. Um, why did you always stay away from the hitter and uh, why did you allow that even though you threw 100 miles an hour? Well, they didn't, uh, they didn't say that to me when I was playing. <laughs> but um, that was my, my comfort zone. You know, I felt uh, I learned, you know, that, that outside corner was, well, was my comfort zone. I, I still think to this day I could close my eyes and hit that outside corner. And I just felt comfortable with that. But uh, I would sometimes come in and all up, you know, to make that ball look a little bigger. But my out pitch was definitely down and away. And I felt comfortable uh, uh, making those pitches. And uh, it paid off pretty good for me. But... Uh, Ozzy and, and Mike Schmidt and all those guys that called me and they, I heard them say that if I would have pitched in, I might have, you know, uh, scared, intimidated the hitters a little more. Well, I figured those guys could be intimidated. They weren't going to be around very long. So I actually just stayed where I felt comfortable. Thank you. Uh, Rick Hummel from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch for Mr. Smith. Um, if you'd had to be a starter in the big leagues, how would that have affected your nap schedule before the game? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, I got to say, it probably would have been better for me because I'd have probably got three days in it. But, <laughs> but uh, uh, I had this thing that um, I had I had a knack that I could relax a little bit before the game. I, I didn't want to say that in front of Mr. Joe Torrey because I was with him quite a bit. And uh, uh, Joe, <laughs> he, you know, he never gave me any, any, any trouble about it. But when the game was on the line, he knew he could come to me. That When he made that statement about me and, and Mariano, other than this moment right here, that was probably one of my pride moments in, in, uh, in baseball, him giving me that compliment. I want to say thank you right here. Thanks, Rick. We have one in the back corner on the left. First of all, congratulations. John Mioli with the Baltimore Sun. Uh, for both of you guys, what recollections do you guys have of playing together in 1994 with the Orioles? And is it crazy that here you are now going to the Hall of Fame together? Uh, watching Lee take a nap. <laughs> 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 no, well, Baltimore is home for me, so uh, it was a very special moment. Uh, I think any player that can play in his hometown enjoy that. I was there for seven years, and I had a, enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, for myself, I, I really enjoyed playing there. I mean, it was it was like one of those those things that every day you would come out of, of the house and someone wanted to see if they could get tickets to the game, man. And that's a good feeling as a player, you know. You know, every day someone is trying to do, you got to sell out crowd for the rest of the season, and someone is trying to get to the ballpark. They let you know what product that organization was putting on the field that year. And uh, for myself, it really hurt what happened at the end of the season because that I thought was probably one of my best years that I was having you know, that year in Baltimore. But I, I tell you what, I, I really love playing there. I wish I could have played that longer and a couple of other places that I went. But uh, just being able to compete you know, in the major leagues and, and see what these guys have to go through as a hitter, 
it's tough, man. Um, I, I found out at an early age that I couldn't hit, so thank God I had a good arm. So uh, <laughs> I could make it to still uh, be up here on this podium. Mate. Another question in the back left corner. Ed Randall, WFAN and uh, Sirius XM Radio. Congratulations to both of you. I I'm just wondering, did either of you own the other when you guys played against each other? I didn't face him that much. Um, we were teammates, but I, I didn't really face him that much. I think as a hitter, pitchers usually know if you hit, hit him pretty well, so Lee probably can answer that question. Well, you know, plus we didn't do that <laughs> interleague play thing that, that we didn't see each other a whole lot. And actually when they did the, the Crosstown Classic, most of the guys didn't play or the guys didn't, didn't pitch, so I didn't get to see Harold a whole lot. Maybe he probably was hitting when I was asleep. That's a good thing. So. I, <laughs> For uh, both of you gentlemen, I, I know today is very meaningful to you. I wonder if there's someone in your life who this day is as meaningful or more meaningful. Maybe the better way to ask this is who is proudest of you today in your lives? Uh, probably my family, my wife, my four kids, my own mother. <laughs> Well, you, you can't go anywhere without... Lee, I ain't done yet, Lee. You done? No. My, um, my father's not here. <laughs> and that's, he's my hero. That's, that's the only thing I miss, is him not being here. All yours, Lee. All right. Uh, uh, like, like the man said, it's got to be your family. And um, I don't want uh, hell to get me up here to Baldwin, too, man. But uh, I have my sister, Bobby Jean. Bobby, she was like uh, my pitching coach, my mom, dad, everything. But she was my older sister. And to this day, if anyone on this face earth that I wish could be here for this moment, it would be her. But you, you can't have more than someone in your corner. You know, when you go out there and feel comfortable when you go out there to try to do a job, that you have somebody in your corner no matter what. Even if I made the wrong decision as a pitcher or didn't save the game, there's always was someone there behind you. And the family in, t in general, is that's, that's go you can't go any better than that. Uh, I had, well, my, my pitching coach was a Hall of Famer by the name of Fergie Jenkins. <laughs> he was like, he was one of those guys. But if I, if I had to pick a guy, that um, that really helped me get over that uh, that threshold as being a closer. We had we had a guy. Not many people are going to remember was named uh, Fred Martin, and he actually taught Bruce Souter the split finger. And uh, he saw these hands, and he thought I could throw a split finger too. But um, I ended up learning the slider from Fergie, and that really helped me out so much. But uh, he was one of the guys that really took care of me. Over on the left. This one, I'm Dan Schlossberg from Forbes. This one is for Harold. I ain't Harold, been crying yet, thank you. Harold, usually 3,000 hits are a benchmark for a Hall of Famer. You came very close in your career, but you didn't get there. Do you think if you had made 3,000 hits, you would have been in the Hall of Fame long before now? I don't know. I mean, it was hard to, um, every time I would hear, they don't recognize the DH, so it might have been still hard to get in. I'm, I'm, I'm very thankful for the day that I did get in. Any other questions? Uh, both of you guys were always gentlemen, always modest about the great things that you accomplished. Do you think that worked against you uh, in this process, the idea that uh, you weren't out there blowing your own horns, you were just waiting to be recognized in the proper way? I, just, I think that's the way I was raised. I mean, you just go do the job. Um, you're not there for um, you're there for your teammates, for your coaches. You're not there for the accolades. I mean, if that comes later, fine. But you're there to, to um, be a team. I, I think me and uh, Harold somewhat fall in the, the same boat. You know, for the fact of talking about the designated hitter as as to the closers. You know, they, it was sort of the same thought of, you know, the guy only pitched one inning, you know, or the guy only hits. Well, I tell you what, those guys right there, um, 
it's they're the, they're the mainstay of a, of a ball club, you know, being in the middle of that lineup, and that's a tough thing. And, and I think we both sort of, sort of, it was slighted in a sense looking at, you know, the closer that got through one inning, as I said, to the designated hitter being, you know, just a hitter. But those guys had a, a, a tough job to do. A question for both of you guys. Harold, any thoughts on Edgar Martinez's candidacy and Lee Mariano Rivera, two, two different cases, one in his last year of eligibility and one in his first? Um, both are well deserving. I mean, hope he gets in. I think he had 70% uh, last year. So usually guys that get that high, usually get in the next year, and I hope he gets in, both of them. I really don't think Mo going to have a problem. The, 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 only, the, the only problem he might have is Cooperstown big enough. That's, that's the only problem he might have, man. But, you know, you, a lot of people don't realize he was like 27, 28 when he came to the big leagues. And when he got there, uh, he was a setup man to John Wetland. So, you know, you just think about, you know, what he had to overcome. And the poor fellow only had one pitch. Feel sorry for him, huh? But, I, you know, he was unbelievable, man. And I, I, I don't – Really, the way things are going now, I don't think nobody's going to touch that record. But, I mean, just the, the things that he's accomplished in probably one of the toughest cities, I think, to play, manage, or whatever in, in, in New York. And he did it there on, on, the, on, the, on the, the main stage. He was, he was the best. Barry, in the second round. Hey, Lee, what do you, what's your recollection of, of Hoffman and I seem to remember you were there when he tied and passed your record at Petco. Am I, am I correct in that? Well, uh, yeah. Matter of fact, I, I was there in, uh, with Hoffie, and actually, actually, I, I had a choice. To, uh, they, they called me and asked me if I could be there for him, you know, possibly to, uh, to break my record. And I had a choice of San Diego, California, or Shreveport, Louisiana. Uh, a lot of thought into that, you know, but uh, when I got there, and I, I actually got there that night, and they actually blew the save. And I'm like, hey, man, thank you. I get to stay in San Diego a couple more days. <laughs> but, you know, uh, you, you just take that, what Hoffie did as a, with a changeup. You know, in San Diego, tough place to pitch, you know, and, you know, you, not taking anything away from, from uh, Mariano for what he'd done, but you're going to pitch with the San Diego Padres where we, they're getting like 85, 87 wins a year, and this man getting 50 saves, throwing the out pitches as a, as a change up in that type ballpark, man. Unbelievable what he'd done, but it's, you know, it's just one of those things he had the heart to do that, and he learned how to pitch, you know, uh, in the game when he didn't throw 95 anymore. You had a history with the Padres. And, uh... What do you remember about the home run Garvey hit off of you? Was that again now? What do you remember about the home run Garvey hit off of you in the playoffs? Uh, well, uh, that was probably that was the only hit that he got off me. He didn't have to do it then. But, um, but you know what? I actually always kept the balls like down and away, and I got that ball up. And not taking the thing uh, away from uh, Steve Garvey, he hit a good pitch, and he hit it in, you know, to right center. But um, it really hurts a little bit, you know, because that's the, I think that's the highlight of the Padres, man. But every time I go to San Diego, they would have, you know, me uh, walking off the mound with Steve Garvey, walking around with the finger up. I'm trying to get that memory out of my mind. You, did, you didn't have to bring it up again. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, man? I, I actually was like my third year in the big leagues, you know, and I'm like, dude, I'm all of the guys on the team had injuries. Now, I'm not going to make any excuses, but I, w I would never have taken that chance to be out there. I would, because you don't know if you don't get the opportunity to do it again. And with the Chicago Cubs, I'm like, hey, man, I'm going to lay it all on the line. But Steve Gardner was one of the best at what he did. We have time for a couple more if we have them. Since uh, hopefully you'll both go in uniforms, can you talk about the city of Chicago? what it means to both of you, and I guess, Harold, we start, please. Uh, it means a lot to me. I mean, they treated me like I'm a Chicagoan. I'm not, but they've, they've always treated me with, uh, with a lot of love. Um, even after I stopped playing, they, they always um, respected the way I played the game. Uh, it, it's home for me, man. Other than uh, Louisiana, if I have a choice about someone I want to be, it definitely would be Chicago. And the, the fans 
they are, have always, always pulled for me. Even though, I mean, no matter what ups and downs the organization or the team are going through, the Cub fans always think of some fun, fun and great memories there. And any chance I get back to go to that ballpark, man, it's it's unbelievable. And I, I still keep in touch with all of my uh, my ground crew buddies, uh, Rick Fuse and all the boys. I always keep in touch with those guys there because they are really not just friends. They're my family. Anything else? No, I think we're done. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all. <laughs> thank you all for joining us today. Thanks for closing this, Harold. Appreciate it. Congratulations Yo, again to Harold Baines <laughs> and Lee Smith, who will be inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame on Sunday, July 21st, 2019, in Cooperstown. We hope to see you all oh, at no, induction she, she weekend. Oh, she, 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 she did everything. Bob Jean did it all. Thanks. Thanks.